Hey guys, and welcome to another video in the Python programming tutorial for beginners. In this video, we're going to talk about user inputs and exception handling in Python. And I'll show you how to get yeah, a user input from the terminal window. It can either be a string or, or some kind of integer, and then we can do something with that user input. And I'll show you how we handle exceptions in Python. And to try, like we use exception handling when we try out a block of code we have made. And if there's an error in that block of code, it will throw an exception and we can like somehow debug our code in that way. So I'll jump into a little bit, give it a notebook and look at some examples. We're now back in the Jupyter notebook and in this video we're talking about user inputs and how to handle exceptions in Python. And the first example here is how to get a user input from, um, from the terminal or in the Jupyter notebook here from the cell. So here we have a variable which is called name and we set it equal to. So we use this function input to get the user input um, and then we pass the parameter um, where we, like, we want to enter your name and then we take that input and store it in the variable name name. So if we print this out it will say enter your name and then we can write our name in this box. So in this case I'll just write the coding library and when we hit, hit enter it will uh, it will execute and our input will then be um, be the name and it will print out your name is and then the name we we enter so your name is the coding library so that's how we get user input um, from the cell or terminal if you're in, in another ID another example down here is that if we want to add two numbers we can have the first number here which is the first input we get and then we can also uh, enter a second number and then we can uh, cast uh, they, they will be entered as strings in this case so we, we have to cast them to integers to add them together and then we restore the uh, then we store the result from the from the sum here and we just print out the result from the entered numbers so in this case we're going to first enter number three we hit enter and then we want to enter the second number which is what we want to plus three with so in this case i'll just uh, type two and we will get the sum here so when we enter again we have um we have entered both inputs and it will print out the sum of these two numbers so the sum of the entered numbers is five which is correct so that's how to get user inputs from the from the cell or terminal and we're going to use that in, in, in later videos as well um, so that's a really useful thing to know as well. The next, the next thing we're going to talk about is how to handle exceptions in Python. And first of all, I want to give you like a short introduction to what exception handling is and what type of keyboards we're using in exception handling. So exception handling is just like when we try to when we want to try to um, to to try out a piece of code or a block of code we have made and see if there's any errors in that code. And if there is, it will throw an exception and something something else happens. So in this case, we have the first keyboard here is try. So we try out a block of code. So it says the, the, the block that lets you test a block of code to check if there is any error. And then if there is an error, it will, get a, it will throw an exception. And if there's no error, you will just run the code and, and, and nothing will happen. And then we go to the finally state, which I'll talk about later. But if an, if an exception um, occurs, if there's any error in the block of code you're trying to execute, and it will throw an exception, which is just the accept keyword, and then you can have some different kind of conditions or print statements in, in that exception block. And the last keyword here is finally, which is just like the, the final statement it will run after trying out the block of code. So it runs the co code regardless of the result trying to accept blocks. So even if even if there was thrown an exception, it will execute the finally uh, finally statement. And even if there were no errors, and we ran the code up here in the try uh, try um, try block here, it will also run run the finally um, state here. So the first example here with an with an exception handling is we try to print the channel name here. And if there's an error, we will throw the exception print an exception occurred. And in this case, if we print it out, an exception occurred because we haven't. Um, we haven't defined this channel name before, so it doesn't know what 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 type uh, what what the, this channel name is, and then there will be an error in the code we're trying to execute here, and it will then throw an exception, and the exception is to print uh, an exception occurred, which is indeed what happens here. The second example here is that now we try to define the channel name here and set it equal to the coding library, and if we try to to do the same um, exception happening again. 
it will print out the channel name here because now we have defined it and it will not execute the accept statement because no exception will, will be thrown. It's also possible in Python to or, or other programming languages to have multiple exceptions. So when we try out a piece of code and we for example want to hear in this case print out channel name 2 which is still not defined. We can throw that if, if, if a name error occurs or if something, if something is not defined or just like any kind of name error, it will print out the name error. And if it's not a name error that happens in our code, it will print the, the other exception case here, which is just something else went wrong. So if we try to print this out, we, name, we can see that it will throw a name error here because this name up here is not defined. It could have been... Um, it could have been a, um, a type, like a, like a data type or something else that was wrong and it will throw this exception down here or some calculations or indexes. But in this case, it's a name error and it will print out the name error. We try to define the channel name down here again and we try to execute the, the statement. But in the last state here, we have the final keyword here, which we're just, we, we will print out uh, exception handling is complete. And it will print this final, finally statement um, even, even though we don't like throw an exception or so it will print out the finally um, state here regardless of what happens in the try accept states. So if we print this out we now defi define the name so it will execute the print channel name 2 so we print out the coding library and then we execute the finally statement here which is just to print out exception handling is complete. So we, from this we know that no errors occurred and our exception handling is, is complete. The fourth and last example I have here is is to how to throw an exception uh, by yourself. If you like want to, if you want to like throw an exception, if you test out some piece of code or some condition occurs. In this case, uh, I have a list here which is just defined as um, it's a list where numbers is from one uh, zero to three, and then in the last uh, element here we have a minus one. And then we go through a list for, with the for loop here where we take like four num in numbers. So we go through all the numbers in this list up here. And then we check if the number, like each element in the list are less, if they're less than zero, which means that it's a negative number, we will raise an exception. And we, we throw an exception with this raise keyword here. And then we raise an exception, which is called, uh, where, where we just raise the exception and, and say that number can't be less than zero and then or else we just print out the number. So in this case if I hit shift enter we will first print out the 0, 1, 2, 3 from the list because they are valid but when we when we see the minus 1 we will get the we will raise an exception here because we check this, this is statement if it's less than 0 and then we throw exception number can't be less than 0 and this is what we see here in the, the output here so we, we see that as a, a, here that an exception is thrown and the exception just says number can't be less than zero. So it's also possible to like throw an, an exception and we usually do that a lot as well, with, especially with list if we're going out of index or we don't want negative numbers and stuff like that. So it's, it's a good thing to also know like how to throw an exception and not only like to, to try out a piece of code and then throw some exception if, if that code do, doesn't run. So that's pretty much it for this video. We're talking about like exceptions and also how to get a user input um, user input to your program. Thank you guys for watching this video. Remember to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell notification. And also like the video to help the YouTube algorithms and know that you want more of this content and in the future and just to like help me grow the channel. So thank you for watching this video guys and see you in the next one. Bye.